Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In uh, this lecture, we are going to start looking at uh, the property of independence of uh, two random variables. Okay, so we'll soon see independence of multiple random variables, but we'll begin with independence of two random variables. So you may remember before we defined independence of two events. Right? When are two events independent? Probability of the intersection of the two events should be the product of the individual probabilities. Probability of A and B equals p of a times p of b then a and b are independent that's the same as saying probability of a given b is equal to probability of a and independence is very useful in computing probabilities we've, we've seen that before okay now it turns out you can sort of extend this definition to random variables now random variables take outcomes to numbers okay and you can also define events using random variables right if i give you a random variable x you can say you know x equals a or x lies in some range okay so all of that becomes events okay so we will say that random variables x and y are independent if you define any event with x alone right you will have supposing you define an event with x falling in some range or x being some value whatever okay some way using just x you define an event and then you take the random variable y and you define an event with just y alone okay so don't don't use x anywhere <laughs> just use y alone and define the event uh, if those two events are always independent Okay, as events they are independent, then we say x and y are independent. Okay, so that's basically the ba most important definition. But it turns out there is a very equivalent formulation in terms of the PMF. Okay, and that is a very powerful and easy thing to uh, implement for us. Okay, so we'll focus mostly on this PMF uh, type uh, definition. But remember, the basic idea is that events defining defined using one random variable, events defined using another random variable. If they are independent, then the random variables themselves are independent that's the basic definition okay now you can show equivalently that if you have the joint pmf of x and y okay f x y if x and y are independent i mean x and y are independent if and only if so this is this goes both ways okay so if x and y are independent the joint pmf is equal to the product of the marginals right f x y of t1 t2 is equal to f x of t1 times f y of t2 Okay, no conditional will appear here, just the marginals. Okay, and it's also true the other way around. If f x y of t one t two equals f x one of f x of t one times f y of t two for all t one t two, then the random variables are independent also. Okay, so this product, uh, just like you know, in in the events we have probability of a and b being p of a into p of b, right? So the uh, intersection becomes a product. Here the joint PMF, which is like the intersection, isn't it? X equals T1 and X equals T2 is the probability that X equals T1 times probability that Y equals T2. Okay, simple uh, translation of the definition. Okay, so notice the factoring in the independent case and the dependent case. In general, you always have F X Y of T1 T2 being F X of T1 times the conditional. So in the independent case, clearly the conditional becomes the same as the marginal. Okay, so conditioning does not change the distribution okay any conditional distribution will give you the same uh, same distribution basically this no, the conditional random variable has the same distribution as the original one okay so the last two points are easy to remember and uh, you, should, you should keep that in mind always x and y are independent then join join pmf equals product of the marginals product of the individual marginals right and uh, conditional pmf equals the marginal pmf okay so simple definition Let's start checking it. Okay, so how do you check it? Let's see a few very simple examples. Okay, uh, given the joint PMF, how do you check for independence? Okay, so that's a simple example we're going to take. We'll take a few a few more examples, and you'll see it, it'll be a very interesting problem to check if random variables are independent. So here there are uh, I've put down a joint PMF of uh, random variables x and y, zero one zero one. So the range is very simple. It's one by four, one by four, one by four, one by four. Uh, you can quickly compute the marginals here, so you'll get half, 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 and you see product of the marginal is what you have here, right? So if, if you look at 1 by 2 into 1 by 2, so this guy is product of, maybe I should write down this, this and this, the product is this, right? 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 is 1 by 4, uh, likewise here, it's easy to see. Here it's easy to see. Uh, so maybe I should use different colors here to bring out this. Let's use a uh, different color here. Notice the color here, right? Half into half. And then uh, pick another color here. Half into half. And pick 
another color here, which is half into half. Okay. So, you see how to check the product of the marginals is equal to the joint distribution. Okay. So, once again, uh, how, what am I checking here? I am checking f x y of t 1 t 2 equals f x of t 1 times f x of t 2 for all t 1 t 2. Okay. So, in this case, you have independent. Okay. That is okay. All right. So, that is good. So, let us come to the next example here. In this example, notice what happens. Okay. You have here. Okay. So, for contrast here, I have uh, this guy. Uh, let us just do this. Here you have independent. Okay. Let us see here. Uh, this f y is going to be 3 by 4 this is going to be 1 by 4. Uh, so, this one is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 8 is 5 by 8, this is 3 by 8. Okay. So, here notice the product is clearly not 1 by 2, right. So, you see here f x y of 0 0 equals half and it is not equal to f x of 0 times f y of 0 which is this guy is actually you know you can, you can write that down there, it is 5 by 8 and this is 3 by 4. So, clearly this is not independent. Okay, notice how from the joint PMF it is okay to do this calculation and check. So, let us do a more general case. So, here we saw it was this was independent, this is not independent. Okay. So, this is a more general case. Okay. So, you know here I will always have half year, half year, half year, half year. Okay. So, you can show by just calculation if x equals 1 by 4, then they are independent. If x is not equal to 1 by 4, it is not independent. Okay. So, the simple case seems easy enough. Uh, Let us complicate things a little bit more. We will make it a slightly bigger problem. Okay. Here is uh, 1 by 9, 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 1 by 9. Uh, so, whenever you have a grid like this with all equal values, uh, it looks very tempting to say that it is going to be independent. Uh, yes, you can check that. You have 1 by 3, 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 1 by 3 and all products are just 1 by 9. So, in this case, yes, independent. Okay, So, easy enough to see that. Uh, so, we saw before that this is independent. Here is another case where the values seem all over the place 1 by 6, 1 by 12, 1 by 12, 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 12, 1 by 12, 1 by 12, 1 by 12, 1 by 24, 1 by 24. I do not know is it is it independent? How do you check that? It is not 1 by 9, 1 by 9, 1 by 9. It is not so easy, but let us see if we can check this, right. So, here you have 1 by 3, okay. So here you have 1 by 2. If you add up this, you get 1 by 6, okay. So, you can add it up, you will get uh, you can see how I got that. If for a fanning effects, you have to add like this along the columns, along the columns, you would add the first column if you sum uh, 1 by 6 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 12, 1 by 6 is 2 by 12, 1 by 4 is 3 by 12, and that is 1 by 2. So, let us add up the columns here. So, you will get half 1 by 4, 1 by 4. You can check this once again 1 by 8 is uh, 3 by 24, 2 by 24, 6 by 24, 1 by 4. Okay, and you can check even though it looks uh, sort of, uh, I mean, uh, very varied. This is always the product, right? So half into one by three, you get that here. So you look at the one by eight here; it's half into one by four. You look at the, you know, one by twelve here; it's one by six times one by two. So in this case also, it's independent. Okay. So even though it looks, uh, you know, it's not one by nine, one by nine, one by nine; it's it's very different uh, values for the joint PMF. But the marginals are also different and the product is still satisfied. So, this is also independent. So, the independent case may look a little bit different from what you are used to. So, you have to pay attention a little bit and you have to really check whether the product is uh, satisfied or not. Okay. There are other simpler ways of checking, but anyway, so we will come back to that later. Okay. So, we saw before that this was independent, this was also independent. Okay. So, in this case, one can very quickly check. 1 by 4, 3 by 8, 3 by 8, uh, 1 by 4, 3 by 8, 3 by 8. One can very easily check that here is a problem. Okay. 
So the zero is sort of a giveaway. You know, if, you, if you have a non-zero value for fx, non-zero value for fy, and a zero here, you see that you can never get this guy as a product of these two, right? So clearly, this is dependent. Okay, so you see that zero is a bit of a giveaway, and uh, maybe you know, I mean, uh, so we saw here this is independent, this is independent, this was dependent. Okay, so this guy, I mean, it looks very dangerously close to this, but if you add it up and see, uh, this will also be dependent. Okay. So how do you check this? You, you have to check uh, one particular case. Uh, let's take one uh, easy case to check. What would be an easy case to check? Let, let's check this case. Uh, hmm, let me take this one. This is uh, 1 by 4, 1 by 2. And uh, this sum is what? 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 is uh, 7 by 24, I think, right? Uh, 3, 3. 6, 7. Okay, so you see here this guy is definitely not this into this, right? It's not going to work out. So this also is dependent. Okay, so so it, it seems a bit non trivial. As the problem gets bigger, uh, you have to really go in and check every possible value and uh, you have to see if it is close enough or not. And at least it appears like that for us. Maybe there are smarter methods that uh, people can think of, but generally the dependency is determined from the joint PMF in this fashion. You find the marginals, okay, very easy steps given the joint PMF, you find the marginals and check if the product of the marginals is going to give you the joint PMF. If it doesn't, then it's not independent. If it does, then it's independent. There's a giveaway sign here. If, if you have, there are two possibilities with the non-zero probability from the marginal, but the joint PMF is zero, that's a quick giveaway sign that it's going to be dependent. Okay, so these are th some things to look out for. So in general, if you have to summarize, if you have to show X and Y are independent, you have to verify that the joint PMF becomes product of marginals for all values of T1 and T2. However, to show X and Y are dependent, it's enough to verify the inequality for some particular value of T1 and T2, right? So that's how independence is defined. Independence, the joint PMF has to become product of the marginals for all possible values of T1 and T2, right? All possible values that uh, a random variable can take. But it's dependent that way, if, if you, even if one value, the product uh, formula is not satisfied, then it is uh, dependent. And in particular, if you have two values in the range of the PMFs, but the joint PMF is zero, that's a very easy way to find out whether uh, the random variable is dependent. Uh, actually, it is dependent, okay? All right, so that was uh, summarizing the uh, independence. So let's see a couple of examples, okay? So you have uh, this example here where, uh, you know, X is the digit in the units place. So X is uniform 0, 1, 2, all the way to 9, okay? X has got that marginal and Y is the remainder, remainder obtained when the number is divided by 4. So Y takes values again uniformly in 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. All right. So here is a case where you can quickly find, you know, this is uh, 1 by 4 and this is 1 by 10. But what is the joint distribution of? x taking value 1 and y taking value 0, okay? So this is the probability that the number ends in 1, but it gives you a remainder of 0 when divided by 4. We've seen this before. This is 0, right? So this is not equal to fx of 1, which is 1 by 10, times fy of 0, which is 1 by 4, okay? So this is a very telltale condition, easy to see that x and y are dependent. So in general, if the two things seem like they're sort of tied together, it's, it is it is going to be dependent. You, you may guess that, but you have to really prove it in this fashion. Okay. So this is a very simple example to see. So let me give you a more practical example and conclude with that and let you think about how you do this. Okay. So now if you come back to the example of this IPL power play over, we've been talking about it over and over again. Okay. And uh, once again, I define these two random variables. X is number of runs in the over, Y is number of wickets in the over. What are you going to guess? Are X and Y independent? Okay. Mostly it looks like no, isn't it? Right. So this is again, there is no 
I mean, you, you may want to look at data and see how to justify it with data. We can think of that later. Okay, but these are the sort of questions that you will be faced with when you're modeling a real life scenario with data. So data will come in, maybe you'll have some data, and then you'll be interested in some objects, uh, some random variables that you define. Okay, and then you have to now sort of think of whether they are independent or not. Because if they are independent, what is great if they are independent? Marginal is enough, right? The joint distribution gets determined by the marginals. And we saw already that in many cases, marginals are much easier to find than the uh, actual joint PMFs. You may, you may not get all kind of data for joint PMF, okay? So being independent is a great thing. It's very, very useful in modeling. It's often assumed in models without uh, any great proof. It's, it's a dangerous assumption sometimes. So you have to really check whether they are independent, okay? So maybe uh, one of the interesting things you can do is uh, take the IPL data and actually try and see if you can look at this joint distribution of XY, is there a reasonable way to find it? And is it really, the, do the does the data suggest X and Y are dependent or independent? It's, it's something interesting that one can think of verifying. Maybe there's a, uh, we will do this as take it up as one of the assignments this week. Okay, thank you very much.